Hi, I'm Andy from the South Yorkshire Demoscopy Academy, here to help you become the great primary care demoscopist you were born to be. In this video, I'll explain what a capillary hemangioma is, how to recognise them, and test your learning with a quiz called Do You Change Your Mind? using four of my own patients. And if you stick around to the end, I'll explain one thing you must do when using one of these, so you don't miss an important diagnosis. Let's jump in. Training a primary care demoscopist for every general practice. Let's discuss what a capillary hemangioma actually is. It's a benign vascular tumour classified as a hamartoma because they are an abnormal proliferation of normal tissues, capillaries and post-capillary venules in this case, in a normal location, which for us is the dermal papillae. Small, flat capillary hemangiomas we call Campbell de Morgan spots, named after an English surgeon. They occur in 5% of adolescents and become increasingly common with age. It's estimated 75% of over 75 year olds will have them. Some people have an awful lot of them. They are equally common in both sexes and in skin of any color, but more noticeable in white skin. When raised and larger, we often call them cherry angiomas because, well, they look like a cherry. Most are between one to three millimeters in diameter. Starting as flat macules, they may become larger papules with time. They are usually asymptomatic. Let's have a look with our dermoscope. Let's first note the colour of these hemangiomas. angiomas. It's a bright red because of the blood travelling through the capillaries. If it becomes deoxygenated, then they will appear blue or even purple. And if the blood clots, it will become black. Each lobule is called a lacoon, the plural being lacunae. In some countries, they call these red clots. Note the stroma the lacunae sit within. This can be clear, a milky yellow, as here, or sometimes even a blue-white colour. For a long time this confused me because when we talk about melanomas there is a thing called a blue-white veil and the colour can appear similar. However, in this context with typical lacunae, the stroma colour isn't important for the diagnosis. There should be no brown in the capillary hemangioma unless colliding by chance with a pigmented lesion such as a lentigo or mole that just happens to be nearby. Also, there should be no blood vessels traversing the surface. You will see capillary hemangiomas depicted like this. Red round balls cluster together, sometimes of different sizes. But as you know, nothing in medicine is ever straightforward. Natural variation means sometimes they can look like this. It's quiz time. Grab your pen and paper if you choose to play along and you'll be managing my four patients by choosing one of these management options. However, this quiz is a do you change your mind quiz. So first of all, I'll give you a photograph, history and examination of the patient without a dermoscopic image. Then I'll add in the dermoscopic image to see if you change your mind. Three bits of information you should know. Patient one, this 47 year old lady's opening words to you are, I'd like you to refer me on the cancer care pathway as a two week wait, because I have a melanoma on my leg. It transpired she had noticed this dark mark on her lateral left thigh and shown it to a hospital consultant when she was attending for something else. His advice was to see her GP urgently and get referred as it was a melanoma. He didn't use a derm scope, so I assume he wasn't a dermatologist. You observe it to be three to four millimeters, slightly irregular, macular and black with a slight red tinge around one edge. What would you do? Patient two. This 43 year old gentleman came to see you with his dark seven millimeter lesion on his upper back. His wife had noticed it a few months ago and thought it was growing. 
hasn't led and was raised and firm but not hard to the touch. What would you do? Patient three is a 43 year old lady who attends with this seven by 10 millimeter firm red nodule on her lower abdomen. He's been there several years, slowly growing, but now is occasionally catching on clothes and bleeding. What would you do? Finally, patient four is a 52 year old lady presenting with a 12 month history of this two to three millimeter macular lesion on her knee. It has no symptoms. What would you do? But you have now been trained in recognizing perihemangiomas and deploy it now on these patient skin lesions. This is what you find. Patient one, does the dermoscopy make you change your mind about what you do? On the history alone, you need a good reason not to refer her urgently. The patient expected a referral and had the backing of a consultant. But look, this is a typical capillary hemangioma. Nice lacoons, no brown or vessels crossing it. I explained what it was, showed her this picture and that I was 100% sure it wasn't a melanoma because of this photograph. And she went away happy. Patient two, does the demoscopy make you change your mind? I was ready to hit the two week wait referral button on this gentleman due to the history and how it actually looked. I didn't want to miss a melanoma. However, here's the dermoscopy. It's another lovely capillary hemangioma. A milky fibrous septi, nice red lacoons and no brown or vessels crossing it. And I reassured him explaining him what it was and sent him on his way. Did this dermoscopy make you change your mind? Patient three. Does the dermoscopy make you change your mind? With its size and bleeding, I thought that's too large, surely for a cherry angioma. I was about to refer as a possible nodular melanoma until I put on my dermoscope. Look, it's red. Lots of blue, white, wispy areas, fibrous septi, but no brown, no vessels. And I thought it was just a large capillary hemangioma where the lacoons had got larger and larger. With it being symptomatic, it needed removing. So if you put referral, that's fine. I do minor surgery and remove this for her within a couple of weeks and histology came back as a capillary hemangioma. Did the demoscopy make you change your mind? Patient four, does this demoscopy picture make you change your mind? This lesion was so small, I could barely see it. I was ready to just reassure her and ask her to return for monitoring if it got larger. It'd been there for 12 months, so it, to me it wasn't very concerning. But on demoscopy, what have we got here? It's not red, it's brown. It's got a dark center, but look at these peripheral brown dots of different sizes and colors. It isn't a capillary hemangioma. And as you will learn, with these peripheral dots, this is a growing nevus. As she's over 40, it's suspicious for an early melanoma. I ended up referring her on the cancer care pathway, having initially not been concerned. When removed, it was a severely dysplastic nevus, but it could have been a melanoma. Did you choose to monitor any of these patients? Maybe, but a good general rule is don't monitor a skin lesion that is raised and growing. Why? Because you're taking a risk. If it's a melanoma, the intervening weeks of growth would worsen the patient's prognosis. The patient won't thank you. To monitor anything on the skin, you need a robust system in place to ensure that patient returns for review. Using Telederm is not wrong. However, I hope you can now see how using a dermscope can make all the difference quickly and easily. Feel free to ask questions and comments in the section below this video. Training a primary care demoscopist for every general practice. So, what's the one thing you must do when using one of these so you don't miss an important diagnosis? It's this, physically check your patient's pulse, especially in the over 60s, assessing the pulse volume, rate and rhythm. These gadgets don't do that. And unless you physically touch your patients, you are more likely to miss asymptomatic atrial fibrillation and other arrhythmias. I picked up many problems in my patients over the years doing this, and I'll have missed them by relying on the pulse oximeter alone. Make physically checking your patient's pulse a habit, and one day you and your patients will be glad that you did. And finally, as a reminder of the nature of capillary hemangiomas, I'm gonna hang this bunch of plastic tomatoes on the shelves behind me. Until next time.